Well, we're leaving now. Okay, we crossed the border. Oh, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. We're out here on the farm today. It's been a few weeks or a while since we've done a video at the farm, so I thought I'd just catch you up on how everything was going here. So I walked through the palm leaves. Yeah, it's been going well. The heat has been pretty crazy, been pretty brutal. It's been over 40 degrees most days, and I think the next two weeks it's going to be the same approaching maybe 45 degrees so it is going to be warm <clears throat> this time of year is the hot season so that's that's what it's like it seems like this is unusually hot so I don't know if this is normal for it to be this warm or not but I tell you what it is toasty this time of year <clears throat> so we may do something different next year during the hot season uh, this March, April, and May time frame. We'll see what we plan on doing. Seems like a good time of the year to travel somewhere, even if it's down to Southern Lao, where it's a little bit cooler around Buxong. Uh, yeah, we'll see what we do. So we are planning on taking a trip to Thailand. We'll be going to Isan, a part of Thailand that maybe not a lot of people see, so we're going to bring you along with us. Hope you can join us over the next couple weeks. Other than that, it's been pretty much the same out here. It's so hot this time of the year, it's hard to, to work on projects. We've had a couple projects that have been on our list that we just haven't quite completed yet such as the the garden, the vegetable garden. We've got it pretty much prepped and we've got what we want to plant. We just have not put everything in yet. So that'll be something that we probably will do once it gets a little bit cooler. And another thing that we're thinking about doing which actually I had this also in some comments. Do, should we consider doing solar for the farm? <clears throat> actually, it's a good question. So if you look, we've got, it's hard to tell here, but we've got quite a bit of roof coverage on the farmhouse. So I think, at a minimum, we will probably do, <clears throat> we'll at least investigate to see what it would look like to have solar on the, on the farmhouse that we just built last year. So if we could do that, then we could at least be self-sufficient for the farmhouse. Already we've got these lights, so these lights here are all solar powered so they charge during the day and light up at night. It would be nice to have some power for the farmhouse so that we can run other things besides just the lights. Two things we need to do or at least investigate. One is since we only have I guess what I would call low power single phase low power coming to the farm we don't really have enough enough power to to run things like air conditioners, those kind of things. It's enough to run lights and fans, but during this time of year it can be pretty brutal. It would be nice to have a little bit more power. So we will probably investigate and get a quote on either bringing full electricity to the farm, which that would include the cost of bringing the concrete poles all the way to our farm. Uh, 
it's right now the the closest the electricity is it's pretty far down there I'd say it's probably it's probably a few kilometers away all we have it right now is again this low power line that's coming in <clears throat> So my guess it would, would be that it would be pretty high cost to pay for the high power cable. First of all, we have to bring in <clears throat> concrete, the concrete poles, and then pay for the high power transmission cables. And I'm assuming also a transformer. Anyway, we'll get a quote. We'll get a quote on that, and we'll also get a quote on installing solar on the farmhouse. So put it on the roof. We've got really two sides, so I think we can catch the sun both in the morning as it's coming over and in the afternoon when it's strongest. I think there are some advantages to solar. I like the idea of being self-sufficient and also independent of power outages. For example, yesterday the power went out pretty much all afternoon. Luckily it wasn't too, too warm. It was still close to 40 degrees, but um, sitting in the shade, it wasn't too bad. So either way, I think for next year, I think we're going to do something a little bit differently so that we've got enough power to to run at least an air conditioner inside the farmhouse and those sorts of things. So more to come on that. That'll be after our trip. Once we get back from Thailand, then we'll start getting quotes on that. So I see that as being probably a project for after the rainy season, uh, which will be during the nice time of year. So that's about it. That's about what we've been up to on the farm. Unless we got sick over the past week, so I don't know if it was the heat or the air pollution. The air has been pretty hazy, very hazy this time of year, so whatever the case, had a headache, and still a little bit of a headache and some congestion, so getting over that just in time for our trip to Thailand. So this is where we have our garden set up. Yeah, as you can see, we've made some progress, still not quite there. We've got everything laid out the way we want it. And we've got our fertilizer now that we collected during before PMI. So we're close. Now we just need to do the last bit of work to put everything in the ground plant everything. So I'm looking forward to our trip to Thailand. It should be a lot of fun. It'll be a nice break. Plus, it'll be interesting. It'll be fun to see uh, different parts of Isan. Isan is supposed to be in some in some ways similar to Lao in terms of the culture and the food. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. <clears throat> it should be interesting to compare compare the two and see what they look like. I know for some of you out there that are looking at retiring in the next few years, you're probably thinking about where you want to retire, is it Lao or is it Thailand or another country in the area? So maybe you get some ideas from our travels and from our trip. So we'll try and, and explore with some of that in mind as well. If you have any specific questions, drop a comment and let us know. All right guys, so we are going to continue packing Get ready for a trip today. We'll show you some of that, some of that trip and some of the details. We're going to be driving across, so we're going to take the family car across the border and into Nongkai, and from there drive 
um, around this region of Isan. Spend the next couple weeks out and about traveling. So we'll take you along with us. But anyway, today, well, we're gonna, this morning, spend the rest of the morning getting ready, packing, and getting ready for our trip. So we will see you later in the video. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break from packing and show you a piece of land that we have. This is in Nongplong, about a 40-minute drive out from the center of Yanshan, and not far from Buda Park, actually. So I bring this up. I wanted to show this piece of land. We've been looking at it, and we've been thinking to ourselves, is it time for us to sell this land, or should we keep it? Um, when we bought this land, uh, this was back in 2012, so a little bit more than 10 years ago, we had not yet bought our farmland that we have now. So we were still looking at options for buying land and developing it. When we bought this, we were out of the country, so we were in the U.S., and so we bought this out of sight, out of mind. And that's maybe maybe a cautionary tale here. When For those of you that are... That reside outside of Lao and you're looking at land, make sure that I would recommend make sure that you're always have a good eye on the ground uh, inspecting land if you're looking at land to buy or you've got someone that is looking at it for you. So we bought this land, three points about it. <clears throat> One, it's not relatively too far from the city, so decent proximity. It already has electricity. And it has water <laughs> so there are some good points to it for us it just didn't really fit our needs so we went on a year or two later and bought the farmland that we have today you can see that we've also got this shared driveway between the property and the neighbors so we are still deciding what we're going to do with this land the land may be for sale or we may just keep it and hold on to it we'll have to see and you can see there's some custard apple right next to the property. So that's nice for those of you that like custard apple. This is the main artery of the village. So this, as in most local Lao villages, this has a main artery that runs through the village. And then people have stores where they sell local goods to the people in the village. <clears throat> so that makes it pretty convenient. The other thing that we noticed driving out of the village, which I thought was interesting, was we saw a person riding an e-bike, which in Lao, historically, you have not had to register an e-bike. So this has been a cheap, easy way for a lot of people without a license or what have you to, to provide transportation. Well, that's changing. As of this year, the government is going to require e-bikes to be registered as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. <laughs> oh my god, that's at the hood. Did you get a haircut again? Hi. Yeah, me. So we had lunch at Oleong next to the VNTN Center. This is a pretty good place. They're known for their specialty coffees and drinks, but they've also got some pretty good dishes uh, noodles and noodle soup dishes, which we had a few different varieties with our niece and nephew, Didi and Peter. And overall, pretty good food, and the prices are actually pretty reasonable. Typically, between 30 and 50,000 kip for a dish. So between the three of us, I think we spent about 200,000 kip, or just a little bit uh, over nine dollars US. So we spent lunch talking through the logistics of crossing the border with the family car, and then we had our lunch which just for the food was about 200,000 Lao Kip. So we had the drunken spicy noodle with seafood, and Didi had the stewed pork with yellow noodle and a ground pork sauce, kind of like a chili. It was pretty tasty. And we also had, Fawn ordered the stewed pork with rice, kind of like a kakamu, and then I had the kalpiak cow or rice porridge with pork. Okay, I had a good breakfast. Spent some time with Didi and Peter mm -hmm. talking about how to cross yeah. the border with the car. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we got our all of our documentation. So we should be good to go. We'll give it a try.
okay, we crossed the border. We made it across to Thailand. Yeah, we do. It was a little bit complicated, but we had all the paperwork we needed, so yeah, we made it across. But the tricky part for us was the, the conveyance of the car to show that we are the rightful owners of it because it's a family car. So yeah. anyway, uh, we're now across the border and we just stopped to get our Thai insurance for the car. And we were just driving around the parking lot and we thought it was the parking attendant, but it turned out to be a Duke Duke driver. It was so helpful. He offered to help us get insurance for our car. So we found this place. So we're waiting for the insurance to get processed. Now we're going to walk over to 7-Eleven to get some things. Okay, so now we're on the Thai side in Nokai. And quick first impressions, it's a pretty town. It's a sleepy town in that it's similar to Yenchan. Quiet uh, river side border town. So we spent the evening driving around and also spent some time on the river walking along the night market that they have little did we know that there were they were having the 30th anniversary celebration so we spent some time and check that out so stay tuned in the next few videos as we spend more time enjoying the 30th anniversary celebration exploring more of Nankai and exploring more of the East San area and finding some interesting landmarks as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.